Hello, my name is Andrew Naring, and today I'm going to show you the basics of becoming a Salesforce admin by showing you how to create custom objects, fields for those objects, and how to rearrange those fields for your page layout, as well as importing a CSV file to update your records and also creating a report. I'll cover as much as I can in the shortest amount of time possible while being as concise and clear as possible. Um, but just follow along with my examples. Uh, it's really not that difficult to understand. Salesforce has a ton of basic functions and only a few complicated functions, but just follow along with me and you should do just fine. For this example, I'm going to be using a local realty agency called Lakes Area Realty that operates in the Twin City uh, metro area and the Western Wisconsin area. And I am going to show you how to create a custom object that they could use to keep track of their properties, their open properties, if they were to use Salesforce. I understand they prob probably use an MLS, but just for the sake of demonstration, I will be using this local realty agency. So first off, what is Salesforce? It's a CRM or a customer relationship manager that businesses use to make sure that all of their different departments, marketing, sales, customer service, etc., all stay on the same page and are able to access and update the same records depending on their situation, market, etc. Uh, et and a Salesforce org is essentially an entire organization that uses Salesforce. Apps are essentially the different pages that different departments in a business uses, like marketing will use the marketing app, the sales team will be using the sales app. Uh, for this example, just to keep things simple, I will be using the sales app right here. And as you can see, we're on the sales page. These all right here are called objects, and they're essentially different tabs that you can access within an app uh, to access or update specific information. Think of it like this. A Salesforce org, your company, think of that as a web browser, your web browser like Google Chrome. And these apps right here are different websites that you have bookmarked up on to Google Chrome. And these objects are all different uh, web pages that you can access within the website. For example, opportunities or leads. They all uh, work within sales, but they all hold different pieces of information. And there are custom and standard objects. Standard objects are the ones that just come along with the sales app. There isn't as much room for editing that you could do with standard apps as you can do with custom apps, which are apps that you create on your own in the setup section, which I will show you how to do. For this example, let's say that Lakes Area Realty wants to create wants me to create a custom object that shows the different properties that are currently available and the different pieces of information within them. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up here in the corner, which is where we'll be doing most of our editing in our Salesforce org. And as you can see, a new tab will pop up right next to our Salesforce org. And it will take us to setup and we'll be automatically on the home page. We don't need to worry about this right now. We'll go to object manager because we will be managing our objects. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to go over to the right and click create and click custom object so that we can create a brand new object for properties. We're going to set the label to property. Plural label is properties. Let's set a few different optional features. We can allow reports, uh, track field history, and I also want to click on launch new custom tab wizard after saving this custom object. This will ensure that once we go through this rigmarole that it will appear in the uh, objects of our choosing. So now that we have all of that clicked up, we hit save and it will launch the new custom tab wizard. The object is property. Tab style is essentially just creates an emoji for it. Click next. We'll just click next again, just to accept the standard savings. And then we have a new property object. So if we go back and refresh, we should be able to see properties in our objects up here. If we don't see it, then we click more and it appears right here. As you can see, there's not much going on. And if we click new, then we can only fill out one piece of information, the property name. And there's a few different pieces of information that I want to add into uh, each record as we update our properties. So we'll go over to property, click fields and relationships, 
and we're going to create new fields. Think of fields as a place where you can put in specific pieces of information. Like for example, since we're working with a realty agency, think of if you had an address field, then that would be the place where you can put in a um, property address. Or if you have a field that requires someone's email address, then you would put in the email address in the field that says email, basically speaking. And we can do a bunch of different things with fields. Uh, so let's start by clicking new in field and relationships we click new the next tab that will pop up is we get to choose our field data type and I want to choose number because I want the first field that pops up to be the ID of the property next I want the field label to be property ID let's have the length be 10 field name will be property ID uh, which is essentially the API label. Uh, decimal places will be zero. Click next, accept the basic security. Look it over one last time and press save. The next field that I want to add is gonna be a text field. So it's gonna be pretty similar to numbers, but just barely different. So we want to choose text for the data type. Click next, field label will be address. Length will be 35 characters. Next, basic field level security. Look it over one last time, seems just fine. Click save and new. I forgot to mention that another thing that you should keep in mind when creating certain fields, depending on the piece of information that they are, you want to make sure that they are required so that you cannot create a new record unless you fill in this specific field. I'll be going back and editing the ID and address field so that they also have this check mark right next to them. So the way that how you can start editing your different fields is you go over to the right Right, click the drop down and hit edit and it should be fairly similar to how it was when you were setting it up just go over to here click required and then click save that easy all right i'm going to continue creating these different fields and then i'm going to show you how to create a simple formula field this next field that i'm going to create is going to be important for the formula field so first we want to create a basic number field and it's going to be square footage and let's make it five, hit the required, next, accept, save. And now I'm gonna show you how to create a formula field for the price per square foot of the property. So a formula field is essentially a means of showcasing a particular field or piece of data or record in a specific way. Uh, and there are a ton of different formulas that you can do, but we're only gonna be focusing on a really simple one first. We're going to be creating the price per square foot um, so we're going to be creating new and we're going to select formula next. The field label will be price per square uh, foot and the formula return type, we will just select it as a number. Next, we're gonna select advanced formula so that we have a few more options for things that we can do. What we'll be doing first is we'll be inserting a field. So let's say, we want to have two plus two is four, but instead of two, we want to have the property square footage times, and let's say the price per square foot is gonna be three bucks. So let's say three. And then we want to check syntax just to make sure that everything is coming out correctly. We click next, we accept the field level security, and then save. So let's see if our formula field will actually uh, work as intended and if our other fields will pop up in our property section. So if we go over back here, click refresh, and then we want to create a new record. Then as you can see, it all appears on the left side and that is kind of annoying and I don't want it all on the left side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rearrange the page layout so that once we, once we open this, these four fields right here will appear on the left side. So how we do that is we go over to object manager, make sure we select property, and then we go to page layouts, which essentially edits how your page is laid out or how the pop-up page right here is laid out. This is going to be the, the regular custom one, but just for the sake of learning something new, let's create a new page layout and then select the new one. So let's choose property layout and then rename it to new page layout. 
and it will take us to the page layout editor. Now, of course, there is a lot of stuff going on here, but we won't be focusing on all of this. We'll only be focusing on property detail, which is the little uh, piece of information that pops up right here. And how we can edit that is a simple drag and drop. All the information here, property ID, address, city, state, yada, 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 all lopsided to the left side as it was here. So we just simply drag whatever we want over to the other side, then click quick save just to give it a quick save, and then just a final save just to be safe. And then we go back here and we click page layout assignment, which will essentially as let us assign uh, the page layouts to different profiles. Since that's only gonna be us using this, and this is, and this is a trailhead, uh, we'll be only doing system administrator because that's us, new page layout, and then click save. We should be able to go back here, hit refresh, and see our new page layout. Excellent, look at that. That's much more, that's much easier to handle. But as you can see, the properties tab is still a little bit empty, and we only have the property name showing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change this up a little bit. The way how you do that is by going over to the gear here, select fields to display. We will be clicking on address, and then we'll click this because these are the fields that are available and these are the fields that will be visible. So I'll also be clicking property ID and move that to the top, asking price, and then save. But there are still no records in here. Uh, and I could just go and, and just fill out a ton of new records, but let's say that Lakes Area Realty has been using an Excel file to upload and take care of and manage all of their records and properties. And this is really inefficient and they want to use Salesforce on uh, the new properties tab. So one thing that we can do is we export all these records into an, a CSV file, which takes a little bit of work in and of itself because you have to go through this, make sure there's no duplicates, make sure that all this is cleaned up. And then we export it into a CSV file, which I've already done, it's right here and then we import it into Salesforce. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do now. We start by going to the data import wizard in our setup. And the data import wizard is essentially something that we can use to up import uh, CSV files or uh, into our org um, and figure out exactly where we want to put them. If you need to import something with more than 50,000 records, I would rec uh, it's recommended that you use data loader and not data import wizard, otherwise things might get screwy. But because we're only gonna be doing like, what, 18 records, then we will be using data import wizard. Let's just launch the wizard. So now we need to figure out what kind of data we're importing. And so we are going to be importing a into a custom object. So let's choose properties. And then we're going to choose what we want to do. We're going to add new records. And in case we need some extra steps like unique values or which user uh, field in your file designates record owners. But we don't really need to do that. Uh, so we're going to click on this and choose a file. You'll find it right here. Double click. Click next. And in case there are some additional records or columns in here that don't necessarily match up exactly with the uh, fields in your uh, information or wherever you're uploading to, then you will be mapping out your records to specific uh, fields. Like for example, if property ID didn't have the uh, new section right here and we needed to put it somewhere, uh, we would do that by putting it with property ID. And since everything is already matched up basically perfectly, we don't really need to worry about that. But in case something needs to be mapped, just assign it to the field of your choosing. Click next. All fields are mapped. There are no unmapped fields. And then we start import and we should get an email when everything is completed. But for now, we'll just be sent over to the bulk data load job page. Uh, which shows uh, the different details for our data. And then we wait. Everything seems to have come in at 100% progress. No failed batches, one complete batch because it was just a small CSV file. So if we go back to all properties and then reload, we should see some new records. 
the property ID right here, we have a property name. And if we click on one of the properties right here, we can see that the field formula that we created, the price per square foot actually does work because the square footage is times by three and is revealed in this field right here. So for the final part of our course, let's say that someone in your org wanted you to create a report on all of the properties that were in the Minneapolis area, not Bloomington or Crystal, but only in Minneapolis. What we would do to create a report that showed only the properties within Minneapolis at a bird's eye view, we go to reports and then we would click new report if there wasn't already one created. We would select a report type, so let's go with properties because that's where we'll be working, and then start report. It automatically shows the property name in the column section right here, but I'm gonna be going by property ID, and then I'm also gonna show the address column, city, state, and zip code, just so that everyone knows what is where exactly. And then I'm gonna add some filters. So let's go with all properties and not just my properties. The property is uh, all time created date, so it doesn't matter when it was created. And then we'll add the filter since um, we, there are a bunch of different things that we could do here, but since we'll only be working with cities and only be showing properties in Minneapolis, let's click on city. And then the operator is essentially the thing that determines what the final result will come out to. In this case, since we want only records that are in Minneapolis, then we would choose equals. The city equals Minneapolis. And there are, of course, some other operators that we could do depending on the filter that we want, but this will suit us just fine. Click Apply. And as you can see, only the cities within Minneapolis are shown. And then we click Save. We create a new report name. Open Properties in Minneapolis. And then we could select the folder if we want, but we don't need to really do that for right now. And then click Save. And then we can click Run. And it is shown right here. So there you have it. There's the basics of becoming a Salesforce admin. You now know the difference between custom and standard objects and how to create custom objects, as well as creating fields for those custom objects and rearranging them on the page layout, and as well as also importing CSV files into your Salesforce app and also creating reports and using filters to figure out exactly what you want in your report. So thank you all so much for your time and I hope you have a good rest of your day.